Hi, it's Kate here. Welcome to my channel. So today we're painting a scene from Mamamoo's Starry Night. But I also wanted to talk to you about my painting process, thought process, techniques, and some of the equipment that I'm using at the moment as well. So I've already lined some cartridge paper with some washi tape, just to give it that nice clean edge. If you've got watercolour paper, that would be best, but I'm simply just using what I've got lying around the house. I've got a collection of brushes in different shapes and sizes, but recently these are the ones that I've been using most. So for landscapes, it's really handy having that wide flat brush just to help cover large areas of colour, but also really good for doing straight lines as well. And I've got some finer brushes too, just to help add detail uh, later on in the process. In terms of painting materials, I'm using gouache. They're both set are really inexpensive. One of them I got from the works. The other set I bought from Amazon and both were, were only about a five reach really. It's not too clear on camera, but before I begin, I like to do a rough sketch, just to give me an idea of where things are, such as the, the sky, the sea, and where the coastline is, etc. I don't like to go into too much details at this stage simply because a lot of it will simply be painted over later on. When painting landscapes, it's always handy to start from what's furthest back and then slowly work your way forward. So I tend to always start with the sky and then work my way to the sea and then to the land. My aim at the start is to fill out as much area as I can, so I don't worry too much about whether the colour is correct or not, it's simply to just create a base layer of paint to work from and to kind of kill off as much white area as you can. Here I'm trying to create a gradient sky by simply painting some darker blues at the top, followed by some mid-tones and some light blues at the bottom as well. And I will just simply like mix the two together as I go along with a kind of slightly damp brush and then keep correcting as I go along by adding more dark tones or more light tones as required. The more I paint in practice, the less I want to blend my colours on page because the nice thing about painting is being able to see the brush strokes, see the marks and also just see, see how having two colours next to each other can kind of imply apply shape and form but at this stage of my painting it did feel quite necessary to just kind of blend the colours together although later on it's something that I don't wish to explore as much. Now that I've got the sky and the sea in place, the next stage is to paint in the land. So I'm using that flat brush again because I really just really like using it for drawing lines and also painting outlines as well in general. It kind of gives a really neat but also quite quite fluid line as well. The best thing about using gouache is that it's really opaque. So you can always layer on top of any colour. It doesn't matter if you're layering light on top of dark, it will cover it. Same as before, I'm painting a base layer, so I'm not too focused on whether this is the best colour or not, because because it's not. It's more just to fill out the fill out all the white areas just so you don't get any white peeking through, and also to give me a better idea of the shapes and also composition of this painting at the stage. Once this part is complete, the next stage is to fill in the darker and lighter tones as that's what's going to give the image a sense of depth.
because gouache is so opaque, it's really forgiving to use. So at this point, I like to layer between darker colours, lighter colours and brighter colours as well. Simply just to try and have a bit of contrast in the image. You know, the light colours will help the dark colours to pop and vice versa. So I would tend to just keep layering at times, probably doing more areas than necessary, but it provides a nice space for the next layer to go on top. So the final stages of painting is where I add the details, the highlights, maybe emphasise some of the darker areas. Once I get to this part of the painting, it's always quite satisfying because you know that you're almost complete. And for this one especially, adding the white for the waves really helps complete the image. I feel like without that, the image was more static and wasn't really didn't really look as lively as it should. If you've made it this far into the video, then do let me know what you think. I appreciate any comments, feedback, any critique as well. I'm interested to see how other people maybe approach this style of painting. Also, if you did enjoy it, please do give it a thumbs up and do subscribe if you want to see more content similar to this.